Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Xiao Talk Show. Today is August twenty-first, and、uh, let's see if I'm alive. Yes, indeed. Okay, nobody's here. Okay, that's my bad. Yeah, because hey, Zitron, crazy. Good morning. So this this strong crazy. Pick a topic for us. Pick a topic for us. Uh, and uh, let me set the window correctly. Uh, start. 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 Command log mod. This strong crazy. Where are you from? What country and、uh, what city? Pick a topic for us. This strong. This strong. So、um, I was hoping the Bethlehem Mill is gonna be here. Oh yes, Zitron is Bethlehem Mill here. I mean, you are friend with、uh, Bethlehem Mill, right? Yeah. So because yesterday he was、uh, asking about keyboard and keyboard layout, so I think maybe we、uh, cover that. You know, yesterday we went into the topic of. Okay, so、uh, we went into the topic of open source and free software because of the mega upload guy. You know, one thing leads to another. Okay, so you know if he's here, or what do you like to see? You know, pick a topic for us. So meanwhile,、uh, there's keyboard.、Uh, many interesting things. Okay, let me cover a little bit about keyboard then. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, five random. Okay, so、um, so random things. You know, there are there's this new mouse、uh, which I don't recommend. This is actually cheap.、Uh, actually, I'm not sure it's on sale right now because on Amazon you only find actually they are selling the they are selling the mouse pad. This one actually. Anyway, this mouse. Uh, actually, I don't know how much it cost. I mean, this trackball, but I don't think it's a good one. Bethlehem Mill, good morning. So, Bethlehem Mill, you 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 have some question about keyboard layout, so maybe we talk about that. That yes, if so, type 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 so. Okay.、Uh, let's see. My voice is working. My head is moving. Good. So this trackball, I don't think it's very good design, because when you have a trackball, you want You want a large ball, okay? I mean, the the larger the ball is better. But if you have a small ball, you know, for some reason, you know, for some situations, small ball is good. But however, the the key thing about trackball is that you want to have maximized. You you want to maximize the exposed area so your hand can roll on it. Actually, let me show you a trackball. So I have this one. This is very popular, and today is very cheap, like twenty-five dollars. You know the classic Logic Tech. It's no good. Okay, this this one is like uh, I mean mine mine is like seven years old. But anyway, this came out almost like fifteen or twenty years ago. Uh, so I do not recommend it. You know, you, you can buy. You know, it's very cheap, twenty-five dollars. But however, when you want to buy an input device, you rather spend, you know, uh, uh, you know, twenty dollars, you know, forty dollars, fifty. You you want to get a good one because it matters. Okay, don't you know? Just oh, I'm gonna, you know, ten dollars cheaper or twenty dollars cheaper. I'm gonna get it、uh, because you're gonna use it, you know, for for rather, you know, several years at least. Anyway, so this one is no good because. You know, it's no good because I mean, com- you know, the thing is, you you want to compare it to all the others. So when you compare to the other, all the others, and and even counting the price, it's not so good. Okay. So for example, no buy this section. All these are, uh, 
this one no good this one no good this one is also very cheap twenty dollars and this design has been out for like 20 years <laughs> and it's no good okay uh, so anyway so you want to get spend a few you know more dollars for example this one is also pretty cheap I think thirty dollars or two forty dollars uh, but it's so compare all everything all things considered this one is good okay uh, okay let, let, let me post my website so if you like to look at them buy it buy it from my website you know support me uh, it's not talk show today is uh, okay so talk show so so we are here today track both re re reviews okay so let's see um, Oh, Bartholomew, you are using Cold Mac. So greetings, yes, twenty. Uh, what what do you mean twenty? Yes, I wondered uh about your opinion on Bora Cold Mac. Okay, let's talk about keyboard layout. Let me finish the, about the trackball. So of the trackballs, you know these are you know they they are you know trackball is unlike mouse for mouse. For mouse, almost every mouse have the same design, you know, uh, except left and right. But basically, all the mouse, you use the same fingers, you know, they they pretty much the same. Uh, trackballs, the design is very diverse. You know, some use the middle finger, some use the thumb finger, and uh, even all the middle fingers. I mean, e even the middle finger ones, they, their design is very diverse. You know, the buttons are all all over the place okay so trackball you have to uh, you know try it if you can but otherwise you know um, very different um, and secondly trackball they are typically of two uh, the ball size is a major thing so the you in general the larger ball size the better okay but also they take more space on your desk so these are the larger balls and and all these are good and if you look at all the people's reviews basically there is no universal agreement you know some will say this is the best some will say this is actually the you know they like this very much some say this is the best some say you know because I've looked hundreds of reviews <laughs> yeah you know I, I, I typically like for example this one this one I, I look I read you know all the hundreds of reviews on Amazon and elsewhere in in you know uh, trackball enthusiast forums and so on there's no universal agreement on which one is the best on the uh, on the other hand for mouse uh, typically there are few people like you know anyway the larger ball is usually better but of course then it takes more desk space uh, and then so anyway so these are the best large ball trackballs usually they are seventy dollars or eighty dollars and here are you know kind of smaller trackballs this one is cheapest this Kensington okay it's uh, you know because and in particular this it has a ring this ring you can like twist it it's like a mouse wheel it function as a mouse wheel uh, so this one is very good and cheap like thirty dollars the others are like this one is eighty dollars this is new like uh, came out last year you know Logitech it's thumb based this one also thumb based so anyway that's you know something about trackball so you can read my websites I give you uh, some details I use my keyboard on the phone. Twenty was a typo. Hi, good morning, Green Deck from Russia. Good morning, Bartholomew from Germany, and Zitron Crazy from Germany. Great, great. Good morning. Uh, so how many how many audience? I have five people watching. So um, I use my keyboard on the phone. Okay, so okay, trackball. So back to this one this one is no good because you know you want to you have you want to maximize the exposed area so when you have a small ball then you have this little you know tiny exposed area that's no good also notice how it's flat so when you have a small ball like that 
and uh, you know with only half of the exposed area it would be better if you don't have this you know <laughs> you know this flat you know thing on the side because other because if if you don't have the flat things then you can actually you, your hand can have more control so this one I would I would not say it's a good one and Amazon also came out with a you know Amazon these days they have Amazon basic basics which I suppose means you know they produce everything from you know every electronics and other things you know just the most basic one and sell it cheap so this one is like twenty dollars or thirty dollars uh, it's a thumb based I'm not sure how good it is but um, you know it's I guess it's cheap and uh, reasonable Okay, so let's talk about any uh, uh, keyboard layouts. A any particular question you have? <laughs> you know, one thing about keyboard layout, let let's go to keyboard layout, okay? So I have this page, it's all about all different kind of layouts. Now, if you don't know, keyboard layouts, you know, uh, for those of you who don't know, we are mostly familiar with QWERTY you know, uh, ASDF, you know, HJKL, that's the layout, that's the letter layout. Now first, so so this is called keyboard layout. This, it means the arrangement of the letter keys, okay. And the most popular is QWERTY. And you might wonder, so what's the deal? You know, have you ever wondered why ASDF? Why is it like that? It's like that because of history, okay. It's not because for you know logical design or efficiency, nothing like that. It's just because historical reasons. Because in the beginning, you have in the beginning you have uh, let's let me talk about that. You know you have what's these mechanical typewriters. So this is like twenty years, two hundred years ago. You have these mechanical typewriters. And one problem is that they jam. You can you can see physically. Um, you have the jamming. You know when you hit a key, the mechanisms. It's actually mechanical. You know like uh, pull, pulley, pulleys and the uh, seesaw and you know all the other mechanisms. So so the hammers strike. You know it goes up. So if you hit multiple keys at the same time, they they will hit. You know they will jam. So basically, originally, the reason of this arrangement is that is to prevent jam. You know, so they eventually came with this, you know, so-called QWERTY arrangement. It's named QWERTY because the top row you have Q W E R T Y. Okay, that's why. That is why we have QWERTY. Now this is like twenty two hundred years ago, uh, but when computer, you know, keyboard is even invented people are used to this arrangement so computer just follow the habit basically so that is why we have QWERTY now this picture is a heat map meaning the the more red are the keys you type the most often you can see that it's not very efficient you can see so there so after QWERTY there is a VORAC you know from this heat map you can see that VORAC keys you know it's more efficient because you don't have to move your fingers all over the place. I've been using Vorac for uh, 25 years now, since 1994. You know, I, I was a QWERTY typist since 1988 or so. Uh, and now I'm Vorac for 25 years. And uh, so Vorac, you know, if you, Vorac is much more efficient. Yeah, they they copied a uh, uh, layout from old typewriters. So Vorac is much more efficient key layout. Uh, there is a question of whether you want to learn Vorac. By the way, if you are, you can change your layout to Vorac on Mac or Windows on Linux. For example, I'm on a Mac. You just go here, and you can pick Vorac. You know. You go to system preferences, you know, that th th you can set it yeah, as and similar on Vorac on uh, Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows or Linux. Okay. Now, as I showed this many times, I'm using a physical Vorac layout, so I don't have to. I don't have to, you know, go to the 
you know software based work because the keys on here is actually dual labels you can see the lower right is Vorac you know the Z uh, Z yeah the lower right is the Vorac layout so that's a physical Vorac keyboard uh, okay so so there's a question you know so Vorac is much more efficient so if you type a lot I recommend Vorac but there's a question do you should you switch or not uh, well that depends on a lot of factors okay uh, Neil yeah of course I know about it I'm a master of keyboards and layouts you know in fact it's mentioned here I have a dedicated article about that but actually I don't know much Neil so Neil is a uh, efficient layout design for German language you know this layout design letter layout design they depend they are dependent dependent on the language of course obviously so for English uh, Vorac is one of the most efficient layout but that's not the only one because since like 20 years ago a lot of people have created many alternative layout each one of them claims to be you know efficient you know you know some of them claims to be even more efficient than Vorac uh, for example one of such is Cormac you know this one is Cormac I don't like Cormac, okay, in general, um, because they, well, anyway, it's up to you to decide. So let me mention a few things. Uh, so first of all, you know, so you have all this layout, you know, if you type a lot, you know, you don't want to use QWERTY, okay, you want to get into Vorac and learn proper typewriting, uh, proper, you know, um, proper touch typing. You know, a lot of people they have their own ways of touch typing, and on online you will hear them say, "Oh, I I I also touch type, but I just don't do it in the you know traditional way." <laughs> don't kid yourself, okay? There's a test you can simply say, you know, whether you touch type or not, like this picture, okay? You take a you take a tower, uh, you take a tower put your hands on the keyboard then cover it if you can work like that for 10 minutes then okay you do touch type doesn't matter what's your methodology okay doesn't matter what's your fingering if you can work like that yeah yes you touch type if you cannot work like that for 10 minutes no you don't touch type you okay <laughs> okay don't kid yourself so you you know I would recommend you know you learn proper touch typing so there are two questions here now. Should you take the time to learn touch typing? You know, proper touch typing. It will take like one month. Okay, that's one question. And the other question is, should you learn Vorac or something alternative such as, you know, Cormac and uh, Walkman, you know, uh, Cormac, Walkman, a set, you know, Norman layout. There are quite a few invented by people, you know, nerds, uh, pretty much and Capwell, uh, Minimac, and you know, uh, Carpox QFMLWY. <laughs> now this one is supposed to, supposed to be scientifically the most efficient according to the uh, metrics, you know, the measurements designed by this guy, Carpox guy. Uh, you know, I have like tons of details on, on you know uh, discussing this on my website so just go to my website if you want to read about them I have like tons of details because I've studied them actually I've been studying them you know since 1992 back then you don't have internet so I read read books you know there are books you know by Vorak guy for example the Vorak has written you know the the Vorak layout is created by this guy named Vorak something okay the Dr. Vorak. Um, so anyway, I read books back then. Then, then on the Mac back then, you don't have Vorak. Okay, uh, Vorak layout came to the Mac in 1998, something like that. My, you know, uh, it was on Windows operating system earlier, like 1994, something like that. 
but anyway, I was a, a Mac user back in 1990s. So I created my own Vorac layout use, using a tool called REST Edit. Uh, you know, this is history. This is 1990s Mac OS. Uh, REST Edit. Let me show you. You can, pub you can probably see some pictures of it. Uh, so yeah, so you see this application in the 1990s, it's called REST Edit and that's the its icon. It's a tremendous, it's very bleeding edge tool back the, at the time. It allows you to, so what does it do? It's like a Windows um, Register Edit. You guys remember Register Edit? Good morning, Dion. So REST Edit, it allows you to create for example create key maps new key map layout you know th anyway this is back then so i use reddit to create a, a vorac layout so i've been using vorac layout since 1994. Uh, it's extremely painful to learn it if you already type touch type quality you know it takes one month one hour a day two two let's say two hours a day one month and the experience is extremely painful because every time you type it's a mistake then you go oh where is the key my god you know <laughs> this is goddamn key then you, you you know this experience is going to last for one month and during the month you you almost like you cannot work normally uh, you know uh, so anyway, so uh, that's about you know that's that's how painful it is. So if you are, you know, you are if you are thinking, oh, I touch, you know, I should learn Vorac because I'm into efficiency and I touch a lot, I type a lot, you know, you learn Vorac, but beware, this frustration will come, <laughs> you know, so you don't get surprised because a lot of people, you know, they try it, then uh, they abandon ship, they go back to. Uh, QWERTY. So anyway, there's a question about whether you should do it, you know, whether you should switch from QWERTY to any of these alternatives. You know, any one of them will take quite, you know, basically a month to get fluent and you have this frustration. So the question whether you should do it or not is actually up to you. There's no absolute answer, okay, because it depends on how much you actually type and also depends on whether you use other people's computer. For example, you go to I go to the library, then I'm gonna start to hunt and pick. <laughs> you know, everyone will look at me and oh, this idiot, you know, <laughs> can't find the keys like he's first time using a computer. Why? Because you know, on, on, in a library, you don't have quality. You know, I mean, you you cannot switch to your uh, Vorag, and and you cannot bring your own keyboard. You know, so you're gonna start to do that. So there's lots of problems like that. Also in a company, if you work with other people, you know, uh, you know, uh, agile, you know, or pair programming, you know, there's lots of these problems. Like if you in a company with your pair programming, you have to switch. You know, you either you bring two keyboards, one for yourself, one for your, you know, co coworkers, or you have to switch, you know, key map every time, you know, he types then switch back every time you type, things like that. So there's lots of practical issues. And everywhere you go, it's going to be QWERTY. Then you might think, oh, I'm just going to be master of both. Yeah, you could, but it's not, it's not, it's not trivial, okay? Then you're going to, okay, first, first of all, you learn, you take one month to, to learn Vorac or whatever, some others, then if you want to keep skills of quality, it's not easy, okay? It's actually going to be another several months of dedicated effort to learn touch type on quality. Because typ typically, yeah, so it's kind of complicated. I would recommend if you're going to learn Vorac, just forget about quality. You know, on, on, on quality, you just hunt and pick, okay? Because if you actually take Especially, don't try to learn Vorac while trying to re retain your quality skills. That's not going to work. Because then, your time to learn Qu uh, Vorac will be like three, four, it will be half a year. And, you know, the frustration, <laughs> you will not be able to find the keys because you are trying to maintain two sets of muscle memory, you know, quality and Vorac. So that's no good. If you want Vorac, go cold turkey and Vorac. You know, pick a vacation 
time. You know, Vorak every day. Vorak and forget, totally forget about QWERTY. Buy a keyboard that's Vorak uh, hardware or keyboard. I have lots of, uh, you know, on my website I have like, I have a dedicated page that's that lists all Vorak uh, layout, physical layout, Vorak keyboards is somewhere there, okay. And also most of these ergonomic ones, they all, all, they all f also feature uh, physical uh, Vorak such as, you know, this, such as this one, this one, this one, this one, not this one, but you can program it, and this one, you know, most of them do. So any, anyway, so if you want to use Vorak or, or alternative layout, you better, you know, get, get, you know, go all the way, then get, buy a good keyboard and all that. Forget, don't, don't try to, you know, do or master QWERTY and Vorak. Unless, you know, you already type Vorak for a year, then you find yourself needing, you know, for example, if you are assistant admin, you need to go around in the office, visit every coworker and try to set up their IP address or whatever. If that's the case, Vorak is probably not for you. If you need to go around people, you know, use other people's computers all the time, then Vorak is not for you, okay? Stick with QWERTY, that's probably best. And similarly for uh, Core Mac and others, okay? Because QWERTY is just a standard. And also, um, so yeah, okay, l l let's be, l let's wrap up about that question. So that, that is about whether you should switch to alternative uh, layout. That, that, I that is the issue, okay? Uh, by the way, there are some websites, you know, online, they are uh, the bag of, you know, false information. Some people will claim, oh, QWERTY is actually more efficient than Vorak. <laughs> That's like, it's 1 plus 1 equals to 3, or oh, 1 plus 1 equals to 5, you know. <laughs> don't, you know, to forget, you know, don't pay attention to those. Uh, they, they don't know what they're talking about. Any, anyway, so... Um, QWERTY, Vorak, Comat. So that's one question, whether you should learn alternative layout. Another question uh, is whether you should learn touch type. Now, if you don't touch type, there's a question whether you should learn it. Uh, again, there's no absolute answer, okay? There's no absolute answer. It really depends on you, or it depends a lot on you. It depends on your situation, your, your case, your use case. Because learning touch type, it, it will take one month one hour a day or, or two hours a day, you know, you'll take one month. So it's not, you know, it's not something trivial, okay. But, you know, but at, rather I would say it's a good thing, okay. In the case of learning to touch type, this is more important than learning whether, learn, whether to switch to Vorak, okay. Yeah, it, it's actually more beneficial, okay. So learning to touch type. So it depends on you. So what? what it, why? Because it will take one month to learn, but also, um, uh, what, what's the? Yeah, also depends on how much you actually type, you know. And on on that question, that also is a lot of issues because you know every much many of us programmers, you know, we think, oh, we I I type all day, you know, online. When you see keyboard reviews or Emacs users, they talk about, oh, I'm a programmer, I type all all day. Actually, they don't type all day, because if you get you know get get a key log, okay, get a key log. Let's see, uh, like get a key log and actually log how many characters you actually type, you know, you, you lock your keystrokes for a month, uh, then you get, you, you, then you know software, okay, here, software, mag, uh, key log, I have a page that lists all key log software, uh, let's see, find log, okay, key log security, okay, list of key logging software, you know, if you are unsure how much you actually type, get a key log, then compare the numbers. I have details, okay, uh, somewhere on this page. Uh, like I have my own key log. I show you how many how many keystrokes I actually type. You know, f for vast majority of programmers, if you get a key log, you know, 
your on average your whole day's typing can can be done in five minutes okay you don't type much at all you, you know go fuck yourself you know i you know you if you continue you know if if you are a touch typer continuously type uh, on, for an average programmer the whole day's typing can be done in five minutes so in other words you only type five minutes in, in if that's the case do you need to learn touch type eh, not really okay you don't need to learn touch type okay so most programmers, you know, especially those who don't touch type, they, you know, each one person have biased view, you know, including politics, include, you know, not just in politics or religion, but also everything else due to your habit, your workflow, your situation, you know, what you need to do every day. So for a typical, typical programmer, uh, even good programmers, I'm talking about, you know, expert programmers, they created lots of critical software, you know, even good programmers, they, uh, when it comes to, you know, keyboard, you know, typing, they, some of them will say, they, they don't touch type, okay, most, most people do not, most programmers do not, because it's actually something you have to learn. So they, they don't touch type, so they have a biased view, they will just say, oh, don't learn, you know, touch typing is no good because all the people I know who touch type, that's those people who got repetitive strain injury, you know, that's total bullshit. You know, it's like, it's like in sports, are you going to go pro or not? If you don't, you know, if you are pros, you know, football, soccer, you know, whatever, running, you know, marathon, it is those people who will have lots of injuries, you know, if you look at sports, athletes, they get injuries, you know, all the sport injuries are from athletes, statistically, not from those non-professional, you know, if you don't, you know, do professional compet competitive sports, you don't get injuries, <laughs> okay, so, so does that mean, Oh, you should never get training. You should never, you know, get training. <laughs> no, you know, those athletes, competitive athletes, you know, they are better. They are far better than you when doing something. When you actually need to, you know, you know, so, so what my point is that, um, yes, you know, professional, you know, those get training in sports, the proper way to run, the proper, proper way to jump. Those people, they get more injury, not because they have training. It's only because they do a lot, it uh, far more, you know, 100 times more than average people. Not because they, they actually properly train for sports. You see what I'm saying? So for touch typing, touch typing is a proper training, okay, proper method. If you type, you know, one hour a day continuously, if you actually average Continu continuously typing one hour, hour a day, that amount of work. Obviously, you know, you want to learn proper touch typing because without proper typing, you get injuries far more often, okay? So, you know, don't listen to the stupid people. Uh, so anyway, whether you should learn touch typing or not, it depends on you, a lot of factors. How much you type, that's one thing and uh, you have to put effort into you know learning it that's another thing okay uh in general um uh, in general i recommend it okay because it actually you type a lot uh also let me mention you know a lot of people will say oh once you learn touch typing you will have repetitive inter injury not really there are details okay because once you you see once you know touch typing, you tend to start to touch, to, to type a lot more than when you don't know touch typing. Because now you can start to write, oh, you know, you know, let me show you. Because once uh, you know how to touch type, then suddenly um, you start to touch type, you start to type a lot more than before because because uh, because for example uh, for example what is my brief you gonna for example when you see someone on the internet who is doing things wrong 
then you gonna correct them you see that you know and lots of things like that you know you start to type more because or when you are chatting with your mom or your girlfriend or, who, or whoever or your boyfriend then you started now now you know how to touch type you, you started to maybe use the right word use the full words and things like that so once you know touch type and also in, in programming also in programming once you know how to touch type you start to write uh, you are prone to write lots of documentations or comments or proper uh, comments you see because before if you do not touch type then you you know you, you try to be minimum like you have your own like each programmer these idiots you know they have yeah oh I have my own way of touch typing then but actually you don't you don't and you know uh, they, they, you know, there are lots of several uh, well-known programmers who has told who holds the idea. You know, they don't touch type, but they they are good programmers. For example, uh, the Emacs leader, the previous Emacs maintainer, Stefan something. Okay, that's a he's a professor in uh, uh, doing research on programming languages. He's the previous maintainer of Emacs, the leader. Okay. His name is Stefan. Uh, who you? Anyone knows the name? Type it. Stefan something. He is one of the guy who tells you, "Oh, don't touch type because uh, if you touch type, you're gonna, you know, all the people I know <laughs> who got uh, repetitive strangers, they are touch typists, you know, stupid." And another guy, for example, the on on the Mac, there is a fantastic keyboard utility called Keyboard Maestro. Okay. You can you can find it you know that's a very popular now you know since like ten years ago they started to charge you know it's like thirty dollars keyboard maestro okay it's a good utility but today there are many uh, let me show you okay it's all all on my website you know I have like a few hundred articles on these details so software keyboard uh, so this page key section on uh, keyboard software Mac keyboard tools okay Mac keyboard tools uh Carol Biner is the best. Use that. Then you have uh you have Mac OS also, you know, Mac OS X, you know, that they also allows you to change keys. Uh programmable keyboards, get get it, okay, buy it. You you want a programmable keyboards. App launcher, then there's keyboard maestro. Oh oh there it is, you know. So this guy, he wrote keyboard maestro. It's a it's a good tool. And uh, it's it's also like it's been around for fifteen years or even twenty years, and some of them, you know, I don't mention it anymore. Quick Key is popular back in nineteen ninety two. Quick Key. Let's see if I still mention it here. You know, so I have you know long experience with this. Um, uh, uh, Q U I C. Let's see if I can find it. Quick silver, quick keep. Uh, okay, I remove it. I removed it because anyway, quick key is you know back in 1990s is extremely popular. Anyway, so these are Mac keyboard tools, and I was talking about typing and injuries, hand injuries. You know this article. How many keystrokes programmers type a day? You know, get a key log. Don't delude yourself actually measure how many you then you know how many keystroke you actually type a day then you can say you know you type all day or not you know you can you can get a sense you know compared to average you know how much uh, keystroke how much your average programmer type how much uh, keystrokes your mom types how much keystroke a gamer types you know depending on the game you know if you are in a role playing game you type a lot you know like second life you know sometimes you type a lot role playing games like you have to describe oh i you know i started to walk towards the north and i turned right and i saw this monster and the, the monster s smiled at me you know th those are old road you know role playing um games you have to type a lot that you you type incredibly be a lot because i was in second life for four years i i used to do that so how much you then you know then then the the highest class the people who type the most is are 
uh, writers and bloggers you know also depends on uh, not all writers but so some writers bloggers they actually you know they they type a lot then at the other extreme then then you have god level which is the data entry clerks like in court you speak i type you know and you have to do, do that for several hours you know that data data entry as a profession doesn't exist anymore but I was a data entry clerk back in 1990s, you know, 1992, I worked as a data entry clerk plus secretary for like two years. Um, so I know the thing. Data entry, so dictation, you know, your salespeople speak, you have to type it, you know, real time, type a letter. And also, um, also, also some other kind of data entries that you have to, you know, there's lots of computing data like IBM in the old days, you know, bunch of numbers you have to you know, enter it into computer. That's called data entry. That's why it's called data entry. But today that job doesn't, I don't think it exists anymore because there's a, a speech recognition, which is actually uh, pretty good for typical speech, but still. Anyway, then also there are re actual professional data entries where they use the they use stenotype. That's you know in court, uh, which is far more efficient than than any any layout or any keyboard. You know, you, when you actually want you know go that level that you want to uh, get into stenotype. Or alternative, you can uh, you know I talk about you know piano key system. There there exist several of such systems uh, for example piano text uh, it's a phd research paper uh, i think master thesis thesis anyway so this there's a video so if you go to my site you actually see the video demo using a piano uh, they have a system then there's also this uh, michela code system you know they have you know i've studied them so so if you really type that, that much at that level these these systems are very fast you know a few times faster than whatever your layout okay because the physical design you know multiple keys chords and uh, actual chords not the pc keyboard code control or you know that that's the worst you, you don't want that at all so these systems you know that's really good uh, so back to about uh, the conclusion of our question, whether you should touch type, that really depends on you, okay, how much you type, uh, you know, whether, we, um, you know, depends on you. And, okay, so that's, uh, that's finished that question. Uh, then back to, uh, maybe we should type it out. Um, so today we, we covered a lot of things, right, you know, but the main things, with lots of digression is uh, Quarty, uh, Quarty Vorag, I'm getting hungry, or layouts, whether uh, uh, should you learn old layouts, okay? And another question is, should you learn uh, touch type? And I also covered a, a little bit about how to learn Vorag code turkey or not and uh, should you retain quality skills you know I have actually it's all on my website you know so how to touch type you know so let's go back to the uh, layout then you know there's several articles about a core uh, a Vorag layout you know this one is the basic it tells you what it is why is it efficient uh, then how is quality design uh, and my experience things like cover lots of things you know will Vorag make you type faster no okay there's a myth going around People think, you know, most average people, when they hear Vorag is better designed, they will think, oh, Vorag will make you type faster. So if I learn Vorag, I will type faster. No. Generally speaking, no. 
uh, unless you are, you know, touch typing competitor, you know, you are a competitor in speed typing. In that case, yes, you practice several, several hours a day, you know, in, in, you know, the, if you really do that, that's the case. But actually, but if you actually actually want to type fast, Vorag is not the answer. You you want to go into stenotype or the piano based system. That's much faster. Okay. And another thing about stenotype is that some people use the Plover Plover project. You know, which is kind of like emulating stenotype machine on a standard PC keyboard. Okay, don't do that. That's worse. That's worse than, than just using a normal Vorac keyboard. I mean, don't do that because if you do that, you get repetitive strain, strain injury fast, fast, faster than anything. You know, Plover. Don't 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 learn learn Plover. Okay. So my my opinion about Plover that system is no good. Absolutely, don't learn it in any case. You know, don't don't learn it. And the only the only situation where you actually want to learn the plover you know is get a real stenotype machine then then you don't need plover because plover is a system to emulate sten stenotype on a pc keyboard right don't do that if you really want stenotype get on stenotype or if you want efficient get on the alternative you know piano key or you know the micala quoted keyboard okay the plover is don't, don't do the crap not not you know you know some people some plover fans they saw my message you know they made ah oh, this guy they don't like me anymore but that's my opinion okay that's my logical analysis of the all things considered you know the efficiency the hand health the damage to your fingers efficiency how fast you can type and uh, the the physical system why it is efficient why you shouldn't do it you know I. In my own opinion, I consider all these things, you know, that that's my conclusion. So we talked about, um, then we also talked about should, should you, uh, yeah, I talked about several of these things. So any, any questions, type it, okay? Type it now. I'm going to read the comments. Let's see how long I've been talking. 46 minutes. I'm getting quite hungry. And uh, let me get a drink and so... Uh, let's talk. So I'm, when I'm getting hungry, you can feel. I don't know how you feel when you get hungry, like really hungry. Uh, for me, like you can kind of feel it. I mean, when you actually get really hungry, there's your body. Um, not just like when you feel like eating. Or, oh, I feel hungry. It's time. It's dinner time. But if you skip lunch and you skip dinner, then your body, you you know, if you skip lunch, you feel hungry. Then you skip dinner, you feel hungry. But at that point, your body will, the, 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 it's not just you feel like eating. So I'm kind of hungry. Then your body, I think, uh, for me, kind of start to shake. Uh, kind of, you can kind of feel it. So I'm ha having apple juice. This is fantastic. Uh, one giant ton of apple juice then then rockstar as usual the energy drink makes me stronger so comments 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 oh it doesn't exist okay <laughs> comment oh so bathroom Vo uh Cormac so we haven't got into wh wh which one is more efficient, Cormac or Vorac? Okay. <laughs> now, as you know, Cormac is one of the alternative layouts, and the uh, Cormac Cormac inventor and Cormac proponents they will they, they like to say they like to believe Cormac is more efficient and than Vorac. <laughs> that you know they they like to believe that Vorac is was invented like. Um, when when was Vorag invented? Uh, Sixty years ago by now. Let's see. Uh, nineteen eighty-seven. Okay, so okay. Yeah. Oh, twenty. Uh, wait. No. Uh, when is Vorag invented? Nineteen thirty-six. 
So it's like 70, 80 years ago. So the Cormac people, they like to see uh, Cormac versus uh, more sufficient layer. The Cormac people, this page I talk about, you know, what is the most efficient layer? The Cormac people, they like to think, you know, oh, Vorag is, you know, 70 years old. Back then, you don't have computers. So, but today we have computers, we can do a lot, a lot analysis of, you know, so corpus, you know, a lot, a lot analysis of text corpus. So that, you know, meaning that, you know, a lot of data, you know, you know, articles from newspapers, from Twitter, you know. So therefore, we have better, uh, we can better decide, you know, design a layout that's uh, actually more efficient than Vorak. Vo okay, that's bullshit. I tell you right now. I tell you right now because I, and I, I, I can tell you, you know, reasons, uh, my rationale and, uh, and analysis why why uh, Cormac is not better okay they are about the same okay depend uh, depends on lots of things just like touch typing or you know alternative layout whether you should you know which one is better De there are quite a lot of issues I'm gonna talk about uh, so Co Cormac um, and by the way you know Copus Copus is the you know as I mentioned you know in my talk show there's a lot of jargons in each community the word corpus is is one of the jargon from the kind of the linguistics uh, community. They say corpus basically means a data data set of you know lots of you know one million books. You know the, you know when when you need to do analysis on the text, such as in crypt, crypto analysis, cryptography, you need to know, for example, which combination of letters occur the most often. Uh, which is shown in this graph, for example, this graph shows the most, it's so-called bigram, two-letter sequence, bigram, or sometimes it's called digram, or, you know, uh, they measure what is, what is the most frequent occurrence of two letters combination in English, you know, for, for German, for French, that would be different. So anyway, in, in linguistics, typically in this kind of area, community, they call a data set as corpus, you know, that's another jargon. Programmer has programmer's jargon, mathematicians that has theirs and, uh, you know. So Cormac, uh, is it better? No, not, not, not in any absolute way. So when is Cormac better? Well, it is better if, um, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's like you have to, when, when, when you have, okay, when, so first of all, how do you define better? First, you know, that's the thing, that, that is a question. How do you define better, you know? For example, there are lots of studies, all these people I, I collected, they study which layout is better, you know, each one has different methodologies, you know. Uh, I looked at, at them, you know, I compare them, I study them, I point out each one's flaws. Uh, so first of all, there's a question. How do, you, how do you define what is, which is better? That depends on how you measure. You know, first of all, the, the most easy measurement is by, by, you know, the heat map. You, you look at, for example, which finger, for example, if the most typed key uh, letters occurs on the home row, so you might think then that is better because then you don't have to move your fingers around. Okay, so that, that is one of the most important way to judge which layout is better. But there's more than that. For example, Vorag, you can see everything is, most, most things happens on the home row. But then on, uh, on this layout, Cormac, it is also true, most of the things, letters happen on the home row. So in this case, then how do you, how do you judge? Well, there's more things. For example, on the home row, typically you want the index finger and middle fingers because they are the most stronger. So if if the most frequent letters happen on these two fingers, then then it's better if they happen elsewhere. So if you measure this, then Cormac Cormac is better. But but hold on a second, okay? But there's more, and and uh, there's quite a lot more. Let me let me point out why uh, Cormac. Let, yeah, so let me go directly point out why Cormac is not better. Okay, first of all, uh, let me point it out. Okay, uh, 
uh, where is it? Vorak, uh, Chromac, uh, which, okay, so. So, um, uh, I'm getting, actually, I'm getting pretty tired <laughs> because I'm hungry and tired. Gnu Bernie says, Bernie Sanders says, eat, uh, wait, <laughs> your, long is, your name is so long, I, I got confused on where to start to read, you know, where, where does the comment begin? So Bernie Sanders says, apple juice patricians versus orange juice peasants, <laughs> indeed. I was just drinking orange juice yesterday. Uh, this is wait. This is orange juice. Yeah, because they don't have you. You know, typically I don't. I like pineapple juice the most. Pineapple. I love pineapple juice. <sighs> I'm getting tired. Okay, Vorak. Uh, let me just let me, let me pinpoint. What, so why Comac is better? First of all, if you type English and English only, then then Comac is slightly better. For it's not, you know, I'm I'm a Vorak user, so of course I don't like to say Comac Comac is better. So this is my biased view. Well, I try to be reasonable too. So first of all, uh, Comac is not better, okay? Because consider how how many texts you actually have to type to actually see the benefit of Comac, even. You know, even we assume that all the text you ever type is English only. You know, because first, you, if if sometimes you need to ch type Chinese, for example, me, then or sometimes you need to type French or Germany or anything that's not just directly English or pro programming languages. For, uh, another example is programming. For, for programming, if you type programming code such as Perl, not much English word. Then 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 Vorak is better. I have studied it, okay, I have studied somewhere, wait, I, I must have a uh, Vorak versus Cormac, okay, I tell you exactly, this, this page is dedicated page on Vorak versus Cormac, okay, okay, it's much easier if, if, I, if I actually just read it, because, you know, I've written, you know, concise and summarized, okay, so, so Cormac, is focused on rolling fingers like 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 this I'm gonna show you okay Comac they 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 focus on like 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 this movement so for example your middle your your pinky first your pinky go down first then your ring finger go down first I'm, I think I'm kind of shaking because I'm <laughs> too hungry then in the, you know you you you, foc you have this uh, movement rolling fingers movement that is usually very comfortable, you know, that is very comfortable. So that is the strong point of Cormac, and that is how it is designed. They focus, they want to put the letters so that you have all these inward, you know, in, inward uh, rolling movements, okay, as, as you see, like, you know, that, 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 you know, inward rolling movement. On the other hand, Vorak is designed alternative, so if you type Vorak, typically what will happen is you 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 use your right hand, then left hand, right hand, left hand. Be, you know that's how Vorak is designed. So these two, you know, are different. Uh, you know, design the the, the different uh, way to make the keyboard efficient. So they are different. You know, depends on which one you prefer more. So so it's a design issue. You know, it, okay. So that's one thing. But because of this, the moment you switch to the moment you are the the things you are typing is not English words, you know English, you know text. Then, the advantage of Cormac, the efficiency of Cormac, becomes drastically goes away, you know, because now you are not typing English. You don't so therefore you you don't have this rolling movement anymore. You know, so I sometimes have to type Chinese. Uh, for example, uh, uh, China, that's Chinese. Da, uh, Zhongwen. Okay, so so that's not English. So you don't have the efficient. You don't have the rolling fingers anymore. So all the the efficiency uh, advantage of uh, Cormac kind of 
get whacked, get went away immediately. Same thing with French. Uh, if you type French, Germany, any language, anything that's not in English, okay. So that's one thing. Then people say Comac is easier to learn because Comac is designed. Well, I'm not going to go into details. You can read it. Um, you know, you can read this article. I, there's a, a lot, you know, reasons. And an, another reason is for programmers. You know, for programmers, you look at Vim users. Vim users, you know, J, uh, KJHL and Emacs users. Uh, Vor, uh, Comac is actually worse. Vorac is better, okay. Then you also look at, um, uh, you know, so several, so the, the main reason is that if the moment you type something that's not English, the Comac advantage goes away drastically. On the other hand, Vorac is still uh, kind of maintains certain efficiency because all the vowels are on the left hand. So it doesn't matter any language, you know, almost all languages you need to have, you know, most languages you have vowels, uh, you know, vowel consonants, vowel consonants, you have, so you, you still have this kind of uh, alternative hands uh, advantage. So that's one reason. And the other big reason Comac is not better because is because even if you type English for the whole life, you know, just how much text you have to type when you until you you, you reach a point where it is better than Vorak, you see? So that's a question because because they say Vorak is better because they measure all Shakespeare's text. They measure ten thousand books, you know. But in real life you don't type ten thousand books, you know. So if you in your whole life's typing maybe perhaps you don't reach that much. So Vorak or Cormac is the uh, same thing to you. That's, so that is my, uh, you know, my my reasons analysis. Okay. Okay. So I've been talking to, uh, for okay, what one hour? One hour. Okay. So let me time to read the comments. Uh, stenotype I talked about. Um, Bartholomew says, so Bernie Sanders, so Bartholomew, I don't know if you know about it, but there is a layout specialized for German language. It's called Neo. Yes, indeed. When it comes to keyboard layout and key binding, I know everything. Eh? I'm, <laughs> I'm the braggadocio. I'm the megala, mo, megala maniac. You know, but uh, it actually, I could say this, this is true. You know, I'm not good at many things. I'm not compared to a lot of programmers, you know, a lot of programmers are better than me. Uh, and Emacs Lisp coders, a lot, you know, a lot better uh, Emacs Lisp coder than me. I'm not, you know, particular good programmer. And, uh, you know, but when it comes to key binding and keyboard shortcuts, you know, this analysis study of, about efficiency, I'm the top master, master. Okay, I'm I'm the top master. Uh, let me say that again. I'm the top master when it comes to key binding, keyboard layout, shortcut layout. You know, there's another th thing, a uh, different concept. It's called shortcut layout, because when typically when people think of layout, they think of the letter layout. Now, key binding uh, is actually it's it's basically another layout shortcut like control x for cut control c for copy that's that's layout okay and and in fact key co keyboard shortcut layout is more critical it's more important with respect to hand health than the key letter layout because why because if you measure statistics you if you get your key log you'll see uh, for typical programmers or photoshop users it is not typing that you do much. It's 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 actually things involving control. You know, control, uh, backspace, delete, open file, close file, cut, copy, undo. Uh, you know, things like that. That for typical programmers, you do that. The keystrokes you type for those kind of things are is more than the keystroke you 
type for entering text, you know, just like normal typing. So therefore, the key layout, I mean, yeah, the shortcut layout is more important. So for example, if you are thinking, oh, uh, maybe I should switch uh, Learn Vorac from QWERTY, you know, things like that. Maybe you think, if you are an Emacs or Vim user, maybe you think, oh, maybe should I learn QWERTY or Vorac? Okay. But before you consider that, it's more important, more benefit to you to consider whether you should change your keyboard shortcut for Emacs or Vim or whatever. Okay, that, that, that is what you should consider first. I have reasons, statistics, you know, that you can see uh, on my blog. Okay, so that's about key binding layout, especially uh, this is particularly, you know, if you are using uh, uh, Vim, Emacs, Photoshop, you know, uh, people. Um, so there are a lot of details and also if you are a Photoshop user then you actually really want is a programmable keypad okay that's what you really uh, want you like get something like uh, four, 30 keys you know programmable keypad so you can just pick don't don't ever do key codes like control C control uh, alt you know option that, that's the worst so that's about that. So what's the question? Neo, yeah. Let me. So well, so so there is a Neo layout. Okay. So Neo layout. Um, yeah. So another thing about alternative layout. So all these Quarty Vorac, programmers Vorac, you know, Minimac, Comac, uh, Walkman, they are designed for English. You know, once you switch to another, if you type German, German or Russian or you know they become in a, they are not efficient they are well usually they are still better than quality but they you know they are not optimal at all uh, so there are people who design layout for different languages uh, for example let's go to uh, where is it uh, international okay so you know so there's a german layout standard german layout then there's a, a german layout this efficient German layout. So there's the Ergo, Neo, ADNW, uh, you know, there are a few and I I don't know much about them. I haven't studied uh, about them. <laughs> I don't, I don't know German. Uh, but I, you know, I, I you know, the, all these articles, I, you know, I, I write them throughout the years, mostly in the past 10 years. So uh, little by little, I improve the article. So for example, for example, in order to study German layout, first of all, you have to kind of find you have to find out the German uh, language efficiency, and you know then in then but before you do that, you have to actually know the German alphabet. You have to actually you know start to learn. Oh, German uses this. You know, so so how many you know do they use? You know, do they use correct? Or do you do they use Spanish? You know, uh, eat, um, acute. You know, like Spanish, French, German. Uh, you know, they all have kind of accents. You know, so you have to know German. Okay, well, German. For German language, you have these, and you know this. You know, you have to learn learn it. Then you study the frequency. You get you compute the frequency. Uh, by the way, I have this frequency counter. Uh, you guys should try it. I have this. Oh, uh, JavaScript is turned off. Let me go to um, here. Let's go there. Let's see comments. Okay, comment, comment. Uh, so I have, so I have this app written in JavaScript that computes or calculates or counts or something about the frequency uh, well I typed it wrong f-r-e-q-u-e-n-c-y of letters okay so they update in real time check it out I like to uh, so you know check out my website support it if you can drop money okay drop money <laughs> so I can I can get something good to eat um, so yeah, so you have to study frequency counter, and this one is measuring letters. You can also, you can post, um, you know, for example, let's go to, uh, 
uh, Unicode. Uh, let's go to the ja JavaScript. Okay, uh, JavaScript. Okay, so JavaScript. I have. Um, so this is JavaScript code. Let's see. Uh, okay, so copy the whole thing. So I can go here, select all, paste. Then you get you get the uh, programming language statistics. You know, for whatever language you you code in C, JavaScript, Perl, Python, Ruby, whatever, Golang, you can see what characters you it uses most often. Now you can remove the uh, so no space, no digits. No, uh, actually, I want no A Z. Okay, so remove the letters. Then you can see different programming languages. You know what punctuation keys. You know, like parentheses, bracket. How, which one is used more often? This is important because programming, you know, languages uses lots of these punctuations. So de again, depending on what you know, so what language you code. If you are a C coder or a JavaScript coder, it will be different, very quite different. So it also you need because you need to consider this if you have considered, for example, am I going to learn Vorac or Dov, uh, Vorac? You know, that's so you need to consider this as well, you know. So there's lots of issues whether you type in German or you know not. So let's go back to the um let's go back where uh okay so i was talking about german layout yeah and so physical german keyboards and historical german keyboard you can see there are you know changes um uh, his uh then okay so then there's ergonomic anyway so there's german there's also french french French, uh, French standard French layout. This is the standard French layout, which is extremely bad, worse than QWERTY when typing French with this. You know, I have details there. I like I when I do this research. You know, you also I you know I don't speak French, so I talk to French people. You know, you need to get information. Uh, so there's French layout. There's then there's efficient layout designed for French. Uh, this one actually they came out with a new uh, layout. The French government actually created a new layout because they realized this is a big problem. The French layout is very bad, extremely bad. So they in 2015 they started to design a new layout for for, for uh, French. Then this year, a few months ago, um, yeah, this year they the final uh, design is published, which is this one, the new French layout. So it's much improvement than the before, but it's still quality. Uh, wait, is it? Uh, I'm not sure. It's uh, wait. So let's see if it's still quality. Oh no, uh, French layout is based on Azerty, A Z E R T Y. Okay. Yeah, assert is pretty much like quality. They they switch, they swapped like four keys. Which by the way, assert is another extremely uh bad lay, uh, layout. One of the standard layout used assert is used in Europe like German, France, they you know, east east eastern Europe they have different um Okay, so let's see what uh what um comments uh, I think I finished about that. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, how many people? Seven. Uh, that okay. So that two more, maybe two more minutes. So type comments. Okay. Questions, comments. Type it. Type it, and uh, let's see what I can, what I can say about that. So Dion says, "Have you ever heard of such a thing as pair mathematics or pair linguistics?" Yeah, no. Yeah, pair programming is one of the most um, uh, idiotic thing. Um, it's it's part of the agile, 
and agile came from um, extreme programming. Uh, the, the, the reason they are there is because co cooperation, corporatism, it, agile, extreme programming, agile, they, they are, they, you know, for a time they are thriving. The reason they are popular is because co corporations, basically because of these managers, uh, the non-programmer managers, you know, you have many managers who don't know how to program. They ne never learned it. They never programmed single line of code. So you have uh, programming, uh, you know, non-programmer managers. So they manage you, you know, you are a programmer. But they don't know, they don't know nothing about software, the code. <laughs> How are they going to, you know, judge your progress? Like they tell, you know, for example, the, you have a project and you and you can tell the manager, oh, this one is difficult, so it will take 10 days. But maybe it takes five days, but he doesn't. I, how do I know? You know, I don't program, <laughs> I can, you know, so it's difficult for me to judge. Therefore, the extreme programming agile, you know, pair programming is created. Why? Because the whole thing, basically the essence of the pair programming, the agile whole thing is, is so, so that, so, so now I don't have to worry about because you programmers watch each other. You, you know, I make, I make the programmers I manage, I make them like, you know, spying each other. So you, you pair programming, you each other check each other's progress, you know. So if you, you know, are lazy, I know, now I know because that guy tells me so. Because I force, I push, so so there's this ideology, agile, you know, all, the, all these things, stand up meeting and all that, so, such that, such that you guys are supposed to, you know, such that it creates a natural em environment so that you guys, in, in essence, becomes, you know, spying each other, working, you know, so I don't have to know code. I can, I can just, you know, look at you guys and nobody c takes credit. You know, you stopped, you know, it prevents any programmer being good. Because if you are really good, if you know a lot, um, your credit, there's no credit, extra credit go to you because now it's like teamwork, you know, that that's one of the things they emphasize. Oh, teamwork. Oh, don't, you know, like you, you instead of, you know, so before Agile, each programmer, you have responsibility, you have skill, you know, how, how you, know, you have knowledge, you know, how much you know depends on how much time you actually spend on the, on, you know, learning it. Your skill depends on how much you actually you practice. So there's good and bad. You know, there's good programmer, there's bad programmer. And you have responsibility. You take on project, if it's good, reward goes to you. If you didn't do well, it's bad. You are responsible. Okay, that's that's a good way. Okay, but with Agile, it kind of, it doesn't like this. Okay, with Agile, it's like, Oh, everyone is equal. Oh, you know, it, it's like, a, it's kind of like, you know, so it makes the situation uh, kind of this very bad. Okay. Uh, so that's digression to Agile, actually. So um, the new, the, okay, Bartholomew says, the news to type in different languages a lot was one of the reasons why it was hard to decide for me to change to a better keyboard layout. The news to type in a different language, okay, was one of it. Yeah, so are you using Cormac now, Bartholomew? Uh, this, the distant gray says, most programmers who are pro proponents of Agile haven't even heard of never mind read the Agile Manifesto. So it isn't even implemented properly in the first place. You know, a few, uh, about three years ago, there is one of the Agile founder. He did a YouTube talk for one hour. And basically he says, you know, he, he himself said, Agile movement is bad because, uh, because Agile has been taken over by by, by corporations, you know, who wants to make money, you know, there are tons of corporations selling books about Agile and their corporations, you know, they, they sell servers, Agile servers. So they go to your company, they tell you how you should do things, you know, they make a lot of money. So 
so he says, you know, the one of the founder, you know, who wrote the manifesto, he says, Agile is no good because it's been, oh, it's just been taken over by these, you know, corporations. So yeah, and but 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 besides that, I mean, even if they have not been taken over by corporations, I do not like Agile. I mean, the manifesto is stupid manifesto. Okay. Um, So Bartholomew says, what you said about the managers applies just as well for how the university degree changed here. They shortened the time you are supposed to study to make everything faster. Uh, in Germany? Okay, tell me about, yeah, I don't know uh, in Germany. So Bartholomew, are you German? Are you like German, you know, German blood is so so to speak, or, or were you American who moved to German? By the way, you know, if you look at American, you know, white American, if you look at their ancestry, you know, whether they came from France or you know, uh, or Netherlands or you know, Northern Europe or what, what, which country, or um, a majority, I think sixty percent actually of the German descent. So Bartholomew says, suddenly they complain that people finishing university in, in such a short time don't know enough about the stuff they studied. Uh, so Bartholomew says, I'm using QWERTY and don't know if or to what I should change. Yeah, that's, yeah, you have to, that depends on you, you know. First, so first of all, look at how much you type, you know, it, you know, think about it. Yeah, so. So Bartholomew says, I mostly write in English, but also German and other languages. Yeah, in that case, don't don't do vo uh, don't do Cormac. Uh, so Oleg, hi Oleg, Oleg, are you where are you from, Oleg? Are you from Russia or? Uh, Oleg says, but Agile is working against. Oh, Agile is working at least in my company. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bartholomew says, 30 years ago it was perfectly fine to study 12 semesters because it is supposed to share, supposed to shape you as a human. Now, if you study 8 semesters, you are looking at weird, you are looking at weirdly by some bosses in companies. So you are in university, Bartholomew? Are you what year are you in university and are you studying computer science or what? Oleg says, also my manager has some technical background. Okay, so Oleg says, I'm from Ukraine. Okay, Ukraine. Ukraine, I believe Ukraine is in Eastern Europe, right? Let's see, Wikipedia. Wikipedia is the answer to the universe. Oh, that's uh, Ukraine is a big country, Eastern Europe. It used to be what? Okay, so it's around there. Uh, okay, so I, th I think that's it for today. I like to, you know, normally I like to send some photos, you know. <laughs> Can you guys actually post pictures on, on this, you know, chat, chat? Because I always like to see street photos of the, you know, different people's places. Yeah, usually I would just go to street my Google Street Map. But anyway, I think we are done today. So say your last words. In thirty seconds, we're gonna shut down. Thank you, guys. Okay, you cannot post picture. Okay. Uh, rain, rain here. Distant gray. Where is, where is that? 
distance gray. So away from distance gray. <laughs> England. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys for coming by. Have a good day. If I missed your questions, you can always post to my YouTube comments and, uh, you know, the more comments, the better. Subscribe and <laughs> thumbs up. Bye.